I bet your pastor hasn't talked about this. I want to show you something that's going to help you understand the past, help you understand the present, help you understand your role in the present and your role in the future. Okay, first let's look at the past. After the Tower of Babel event, where God dispersed people to different nations, he assigned these spiritual beings. If you want to say angels, that's okay. I, I would just say there were some kind of spiritual beings over the nations, the different nations that got divided up there. Now, some translations of the Bible will say children of Israel instead of the sons of God or the heavenly court or angels uh, like this one does, okay, like these. I think that those translations that say the children of Israel are wrong, don't have time to get into that now, but you'll see where this makes sense. Now, this is uncomfortable for a lot of people, so they kind of shy away from uh, using certain words, but here they're very explicit, and it says, according to the number of the gods. Now, what God did was he set up these beings to be over these territories, these countries. Now, they reported to God. They, they pointed to God, but they were the governing body, not God. God kept back, it says in the scriptures, Right after this, God kept back Jacob, what would become Israel, for himself. That's one reason we say he's the God of Israel, because he chose them for himself, put the other beings <laughs> in charge of these other countries. Now, again, that does not mean they were supposed to be worshipped or anything like that. They were just the governing influence over that area. Now, at some point, these beings that were in charge of the other countries, the other nations, they fall. They become corrupt. This is way back in ancient history, before we have records of anything, okay? So, we're not talking about 20 years ago, <laughs> or even 2,000 years ago. We're talking about further, further back, early on. And as you can see, they become corrupt. They lay down on the job. There's all kinds of corruption going on. And God curses them to be unalived like men are. So this shows you these were not uh, men that God was talking about here because he curses them to lose their immortality. All right. Now, this also, as a side note, when Jesus quotes Psalm 82 and says, ye are gods, he's talking about being a divine being. He's not talking. He's not telling people that they're gods. That's a little little miss hap that people have. But sometimes, Psalm 82, sometimes uh, different Bible translators are afraid to use the correct words here for Elohim, which is translated God, but it, it can all, it's it's sort of like, it's just kind of a generic term, like spirit. You know, we know there's the Holy Spirit, and we know that there's bad spirits, okay? So don't get hung up over this word. It's just a generic term. It's not saying that these gods are on the same level as the God of Israel, the Father God, our Creator God. No, no, he's just saying that these are these beings, if you want to use the term angel, that if you're more com comfortable with that, you can, that were assigned to control these areas. They failed. They became corrupt, and he curses them, and they lose their immortality. I mean, look around at the earth today. You can tell <laughs> they're still not doing their job right. So we see this in Daniel, when the angel comes to speak with Daniel, he got stopped by the prince of Persia, okay? He had to call upon Michael, the prince. Of, these are principalities, not flesh and blood princes, but princes over, spiritual princes over certain areas. And Michael was over Israel, so he had to call in reinforcements there uh, to help him get to Daniel because the prince of Persia this fallen, corrupt being was trying to stop him from getting, getting the message through. So these spiritual entities that were over all of the nations at the time, they're still in place. They're still there. They started receiving worship in and of themselves. Now, they can change names. They don't have to stick to the same name or anything. The principal thing is that they want to take away any kind of worship, any kind of um, spreading of the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. They're, that is the goal. So they don't care what name you call them, but they are over these regions, okay? So the one that I would say over North America, this area, 
tries to convince you that he doesn't exist. Okay, that's kind of his main strategy is to lay low. Now, these things, just, just to give you an example, back, back in the days, back the Aztecs, the Mayans and all that, they did uh, human unaliving, human offerings to their gods. And you say, well, where's that at today? Well, that still happens through abortion. Okay, that's what that entity is still receiving um, this whatever you want to call it, this blood payment. Now, unfortunately, no matter what side you support, uh, the American government and most of the other governments in this area of the world still support abortion. It's they support it. They uphold it as a legal right in some respects everywhere. OK, so that thing, that entity is still ruling over. It's still getting the offerings that it desires. Now, I've spoken before about there being only two powers in the spiritual world, the kingdom of light, God, Jesus, and the kingdom of darkness, which is Satan, okay? And so when these things rebelled against God, guess what kingdom they went into? The kingdom of darkness. And Satan, the God of this age, is over them. They report to him. They're in his kingdom, okay? Their head is Satan, this world is in rebellion against the kingdom of God. As Christians, as believers, we represent the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God on earth. We're not under, so to speak, this other kingdom. We are at war with it. All right? And so this is what Paul is referring to in Ephesians when he says we, not, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So it's not against people. People are deceived and that sort of thing. But we're, we're wrestling against principalities. Again, there's that word again. The princes of these areas against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. And it goes on. So these things are still here. They haven't been, their immortality has not been removed yet. Now, as you can see, there's a whole network of these spiritual entities underneath one in a given region. It's not, I'm not just talking about one spirit, but, but there's the head of this region. They all report to Satan. Now, what we're doing as Christians, as representatives of the kingdom of God, we have, God is allowing us to help remove these things. So right now, through this battle, in a sense, we're being trained to reign with God. We're being matured into sons and daughters of God through this battle so that we can reign with him. That's part of it as well. All of creation, people that are deceived, the fish, the mountains, the volcanoes, they're all waiting for the revealing of the sons of God, the mature sons and daughters of God. Okay, that's who they're looking for. The, the word don't get tripped up because it says sons, that's a position. In the Old Testament, a lot of these Entities are referred to as sons of God. You're being trained to take their positions, so they don't like you. Now, Jesus, his life, he shows us a son of God. What's he doing? He's casting out demons. He's healing the sick. That doesn't mean you have to go into full-time ministry or something, but you should be praying that that's the sign of a believer. That's the sign of a son or daughter of God that, you know, the sick are being healed. Demons are cast out. The work of Satan is being removed, okay? It's not just those things. But let, let's look at some things, again, that the previous sons did that were wrong. Are we giving justice to the weak and fatherless? Are we maintaining the right of the destitute? Are we rescuing the weak and needy, okay? Again, that's a question that you need to ask yourself, okay? This is what God is training you to become a manifested son of God, somebody that reflects the image of God. Like Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Are people going to say to you in some capacity, if I see Daryl, <laughs> I've seen Jesus, okay? We are to reflect his image, do what he did. Questions below, uh, please leave them. Uh, if you want to get deep into this, into the Old Testament stuff, Dr. Michael Heiser has done a whole lot of work 
uh, on this. You can check that out. God bless you. Hope it helps.